Hi, welcome back to Coding with Carl. I'm Carl. What we made yesterday was a version of the classic arcade game Pong. What we're going to do today is add scoring to our game because the way we had it set up yesterday, you could play the game but you couldn't keep track of the score, so you know you couldn't tell who was winning. It's an important part of the game, so it's something we definitely want to add. I'll switch over to what we did yesterday, have a quick look at that. There is a little bit of tidying up we need to do first before we do scoring. So we'll do that um, first and then we can get on with the coding of the scoring. So here's our game from yesterday. Um, players can move up and down. The ball bounces around but we're not, we haven't put scoring in yet. Um, the controls if you remember were W and S for player 1 and player 2 was using up and down arrows. Bit of tidying up from yesterday, and um, the first thing I want to do is rename the sprites so that they're actually using the proper names. Um, rather than just being called Paddle and Paddle 2, I'm going to rename Paddle to Player 1. So if I click on the Paddle, click on the blue eye, let's call that Player 1. And we'll rename Player 2, or Paddle 2 to Player 2 I should say. And we'll rename the button to ball. A little bit of tidying up there. Um, another piece of adjustment I'm going to do um, just before we get started is I think the ball, I think I've tested it a little bit more, I think the ball is a little bit on the big side. So I'm going to make the ball a little bit smaller. So instead of 35%, I'm going to put 20%. That is actually going to help us when we're doing scoring as well. Um, you can have the sprites bigger than what I've done if you want to make the game a little bit easier. You, you will need to adjust a few of the coordinates though um, so that the, the code that we're doing is still going to work. And um, Basically, the bigger the sprites, they'll need to be a little bit closer to the centre. But the position that I've got mine will work, so if you couple what I've done, it's still going to work. But you can adjust it if you need to. Um, that's all I'm going to do just for my adjustments. We'll get on to doing the um, scoring now. All of the code for the scoring is going to be on the ball sprite. Most of the things we add to Pong actually will be on the ball sprite. All the players really do, well most of the time anyway, is just move up and down. And that's all that they're going to do in our simple version at the moment. So we're going to spend most of our time on the ball. What I'm going to do, when I did this video the first time, my um, face is in the bottom right corner. I was doing coding underneath where my vi video of the face was didn't work so I'm going to move the code from yesterday over there so we can use this center space so then at least you can see what I'm doing okay we're going to do scoring so the first block we need is going to be a green flag block as always now you probably figured out if we're going to do scoring we're going to need some variables so let's go to data and we need to make two variables for this because we've got two players we need a score for player one and a score for player two as well so we know who's who so let's go to make a variable and I'm going to make player one score first. You don't need to use the same names. If you just want to put something like P1 score or 1 score or something, if you want to make it a little bit shorter, you can. The names of variables don't matter too much. It's just to help, it just helps us really. So if we give it um, a clear name, we know what it is then. But we could call it anything really. So there's player one score. Let's make another one for player two. Remember, when we're making variables, 99% of the time we want to make variables for all sprites and that's the case here, so I'm going to leave that where it is. Let's click OK. Now you can see it's put player 2 score on there. I think it would be better if we have the player 2 score over on the right hand side of the screen where player 2 is. So we can drag that over just to position it. If you want to change how these um, variable bu buttons look, you can click on them and or double click on them and you can see you can have it display just the number which might actually be okay for this game I think it's pretty obvious what that number is going to be if we're playing Pong or if you can double click again you actually have these sliders these let you change the variable like so we don't really need it like that you'd use those sliders if you were doing testing which we're not doing I'm going to leave mine um, as they are so it actually says what we're looking at but if you want to change them you can so there's our variable set up Let's um, actually put it into the um, into the code. So at the start of the game, we want to set. Now it says player two score there. I want to set player one first. So I'm going to click on the drop down arrow, 
and I can rename that to player one. People often think, oh, I've made two variables, I've made a load of variables, but there's only one set block. You don't get a set block for each variable, you can just change it that way. Let's do player two as well. That was already in there for me, saves a bit of time. So we're setting the scores of both players to zero at the start. The rest of our code for um, scoring is going to be in a forever loop. Because scoring is going to be happening all the way through the game. We need to be checking it forever, basically, or all the time. So the way we're going to do scoring, or the way that it's going to work, if I pretend I'm player one, I've hit the ball towards player two and player two, for whatever reason, misses the ball. So once the ball gets past player two, so that the, it's gone past them, they're not gonna be able to hit it, that's when we're gonna score a point, when the ball's past player two. We don't want it to um, work by hitting the edge of the screen. We haven't really got a good way of checking that on scratch that's gonna work consistently. There are a few different ways of doing scoring. The way I'm showing you now is the way that I found to be the most consistent. Um, what things, um, setting up scoring and things like this in games, it doesn't always work the way you expect it to. So there are different ways of doing scoring, but this is the one I found works the best when I've been doing it. Um, but yeah, if, there is, if you've got an, uh, another idea for how it's gonna work, you can certainly give that a try. Maybe it worked better than mine. So. We're going to work out the position of the um, the ball, and we're going to need to know the position of um, player two to work out then if we should give player one a point. So it's like in tennis: if you hit the if you if they miss the ball, you get a point. It is a little bit confusing to get your head around it. Right then, so the way we're going to do it: we're going to start with an if. We're going to be getting Scratch to ask if the ball is past player two. And with, for this, we're gonna need to use some coordinate blocks. So if we go to motion, we can get, if we go right to the bottom, we've got these kind of torpedo shaped blocks here. We can use these for scratch to find out what the exposition of the ball in this case is. If you click on that, it says there, you can see it says 217, which is the current exposition. So we're gonna use that block and we're gonna use it with another block we haven't used, a more than or a greater than block. When you're doing scoring, a really easy mistake to make is just mixing up your greater than and less than blocks. They're very similar looking, and when you're looking through your code for problems, it's very easy to miss um, these symbols just because of how similar they look. So if you do have problems setting up scoring today, that's the first place I would check to see if you've got that right. Um, so I'll put the greater than block with exposition in my if, and what do we want the exposition of the ball to be greater than? Well, it needs to be greater than the exposition of player two. Now, we know what that is because player two can only move up and down, so the exposition, that's side to side, remember? The side to side position isn't gonna change, it's always gonna be 200. So we could use, really, any number more than 200. Now, the reason I'm not gonna use, um, or simply put, more than 200, is that if it was exactly 200, the position of the ball would be, if I just get it just right, it would be kind of just there. And the player can actually still hit the ball there if he just moved up and nudged it. So we want the ball to be a little bit past player two before we check. So rather than saying more than 200, I'm gonna put more than 210, so that it's definitely gone past player two before we start saying, okay, let's give some points out. So the what we're gonna do very simply to start with, if the position, the X position of the ball is more than 210, we're gonna give player one a point. So we'll go to data, let's get the change block, change player one's score by one. Now, if we just use this at the moment, because you might be thinking, well, that's surely it. Ah, that's not, that's not gonna work on its own. If I just show you what would happen now, if I just reset it. So I'll move player two out of the way, and you could see when it went past player two, it gave me five or six points each time. I think each time it seems to be counting up by six, or sometimes five points. We don't want it to give loads of points out each time we miss. We just want it to give one point at a time. So what we're gonna to have to do is kind of pause 
the um, or kind of take the ball out of the game for a couple of seconds, just so that we've got enough time to um, change the score and give the players chance as well to kind of um, get back into the game. If you've missed the ball and then the, if the game just carried on, it'd be kind of confusing for you. You're already losing points. Let's not make it too unfair. So if the player misses the ball, they're going to get a free shot basically. So that's what we'll set up next. That will also mean that we'll only get one point at a time. If you want to get more points um, than one each time, you can just change that number instead. I mean, you might want it to go up in five points. Rather than having doing it the way I just showed you, just change that to a five. So we're just getting one set of points. Okay then. So, when the player misses the ball, besides changing the score, we're also going to um, kind of reset the ball and reset the play. So if we go to looks, the first thing we'll do, before we even give a point out, is hide the ball. This stops um, the players bouncing it or interacting with it, takes it out of the game temporarily. Even though it's hidden, if I hide it like that, if you see I double clicked on the hide block, the ball is still there. If you can see where I'm double clicking on it, you can see on screen where it is, it's just hidden, it's just invisible. And when it's invisible, the players can't interact with it. No, they can't bounce it. So we hide the ball. We're going to change the score by one, and then we're going to have a, a weight block in there. This is just to give player two chance to kind of get their bearings back and kind of recover. Like in tennis, when the player misses a the ball, they don't have to keep on playing straight away. They'll just pace around a little bit, collect themselves. We're going to do the same thing for our game. So after player one scored a point, we're going to have a two second wait, and then we're going to use some blocks we haven't used again, lots of new blocks today. We're going to use the set X block. This though, if I just bring the ball back so we can actually see it. Set X is going to set how far along the X axis or how far left and right our ball is going to be. So if the ball is past player 2, the first thing we want to do is put the ball back in front of player 2. So for this we'll set our X position to, we'll try 150, let's see what that looks like. Um, and then we want the ball to go back towards um, player one to give player two a kind of free shot. So if I put that on there, so we want the ball to go to X position 150, point in direction, we want it to go left, we want it to go back to player one. So minus 90 for that. Once we've um, repositioned the ball and we've paused the game a little bit, we'll bring the ball back. and then the game can carry on. So if I just test that out now, we haven't got player, um, we haven't got scoring for player two yet, this will just be scoring for player one, but we'll still test it, because once we've done this, we'll be able to copy all of that for player two to save some time. So if I miss the ball again, player one's got a point, and after two seconds, the ball came back. Now there is something I'm not um, happy about at the moment, which I'm gonna change. Even though I missed the ball here, the ball reappears nowhere near player two. In tennis, if the other players miss the ball, they'll get a chance to um, hit the ball back. So we're going to do that as well. So rather than the ball just appear where it disappeared, we'll bring it to wherever player the other player is. So it's like then that the player's hitting the ball back rather than it just appearing out of nowhere. So another block we're going to have, add into this section before the show, so whilst it's still hidden, we're just going to change the Y coordinate of the ball as well. Oh, I'm not going to change it, sorry, we're going to set it. Now, we always want the ball to go to X150, so in front of the player. The Y coordinate is going to line the ball up with where the player is in terms of um, up and down our Y axis. So we want the ball to go to the same position that the player is at. So for this, we can use another new block from Sensing. I don't really know what you'd call this block. The only word that's always on there is of, which isn't really a good name for a block. But it's a really useful block because it lets us um, find the values of all these different um, settings. So we've got size, we've got costume number, direction, really useful block. We're gonna use it today for Y position to find the Y position of player two. 
So if player um, one scored a point, let's give player two a free shot. We're going to set the Y position of the ball to wherever the Y position of player two is. So if I show you it this time, if I miss the ball, the ball reappears in front of player two to give them a free shot. That all seems to be working. Player one was scoring points. It's resetting the ball properly now. Now we can copy all of this so that we've got the code in for player two as well. Now, because it's going to work the same way as player one, we can just duplicate the whole thing and just adjust a few of the numbers. So to duplicate this if statement, we're going to right click on the if, click on duplicate. We'll put that underneath. Again, make sure that you put the if in the right place. It's very easy to put it here. But as you can see now, my first if is inside, or my second if is inside the first one, which would mean that player two could only score, or player two could only score a point if player one's already scoring a point. It's not going to work. So let's make sure that's in the right place. So let's change these numbers now for player one or for player two. This is confusing. Um, this is for player two scoring. So this time the ball would be over on the left hand side. So rather than the x position of the ball being 210, it's going to be minus 210. So it's past player one. So player one has missed. So then player two should get a point. We'll still have it wait two seconds so that it's fair. Um, the more that these numbers we can keep the same, the more fair it's going to be for the players. So it's going to wait two seconds. Ah, the ball x position doesn't need to go back to 150. It needs to be on the player one side of the screen. So minus 250. So minus 150. We're going to set the Y position of the ball, not to player 2, but to player 1. And the direction of the ball, instead of being minus 90, so going to the left, we want it going 90 degrees to the right. Let's give that a test. Ah. Remember how I said it was very easy to make a mistake with the greater than and less than blocks? Well, it looks like I've made that mistake. If you notice, on the if block, or the if statement for player 1, I didn't change the greater than and less than. This one needs to be the other way around. At the moment, our ball... If I bring it back... If our ball is over on this side of the screen, if I just run the game again... You can see player two score is going up, and the, but the ball isn't appearing. The, the game is constantly giving player two points. So we made a mistake on this section, and it's this more than block here. At the moment, it's saying if the x position of the ball is more than minus 210. Well, to start with, our ball's position is going to be minus 170, which is more than minus 210. So this block needs to be a less than instead, so that we're only doing or we're only giving player two points if the ball's position is less than minus 100. Sorry, less than minus 210. All these numbers. So the easiest way to do that: don't get the um, less than block and try and swap it all around. You can just right click on the more than block, and you can just change it there. You've got equals there as well, but we don't want that today. There, less than minus 210. So with that bug fixed, let's see if it works now. Okay, it gave player one a point at the beginning. Not sure what's going on there. Let's see if that happens again. If I miss the ball. Okay, so player one's got a point there. That looks like it's okay. It's resetting the ball properly. Let's see if player one or player two can score points. So I'll deliberately miss as player one now. There we go. Seems to be okay. Um, and that's it for scoring. Um, the only thing I'm going to do now um, is just to put some sounds on, just to make it a little bit easier to tell what's going on in the game. Um, so I'm going to add a sound for when a player scores a point. And I think I'll have another sound just at the start of the game, or maybe when the player starts moving again. Let's try adding a sound for scoring a point in first. So let's go to sounds, go onto the speaker, 
and I want a kind of effect which sounds like something to do with scoring points. So let's try uh, let's try effects. See, so pops okay. It's not the best one though. Oink, oink. There's loads of different sounds. I think I'll just use boing. Fairy dust. Mm. Let's go with boing. So I've added the boing sound to the um, sprite. So when we miss a point, or when we miss a ball and we get a point, it's going to play a sound as well. So these two sections here, remember, are to do with scoring. So along with giving us a point, we're going to have it play a sound as well. Let's see how that sounds. Oink. Looks okay. I'd like there to be a sound for when the ball first gets set off, just to tell the players, right, it's time to time to concentrate. So I'm going to add another sound on. Let's have a quick look. I think I will use fairy dust for this one, or maybe let's see what we've got. Snap will be a good one. That's a good snappy sound. So we'll select that. Now, where do we want it to play this sound? We want it to play this when it resets the position of the ball. So there's three times it does that. Once for when player one scores a point, once for when player two scores, and at the start of the game as well. So I have to put these block in a few different places. So I'll put it um, put it after the show, actually. So when it's back on the screen, we're going to play a sound. Put it for player one as well. And we'll also have it play just at the start of the game. Adding a few sounds in like that really makes the game a lot more interesting, so let's try it now. Let's miss a point, see what happens. Yeah, that's looking a lot better now. It's easier to tell what's going on with the game. Um, and that's it for the video today. Um, some other things that you might want to do to your game to make it more interesting. Maybe put a sound effect in for when the players bounce the ball. Um, I'm not going to do that, but I'm sure that there's a, a way that you could figure out to do that. Um, other things that we're going to add to the game, I'll probably do another video on this. Um, I'd like to show you how to add a computer player into the game. So, I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, Give it a like, a share, a subscribe, do the YouTube thing. Um, it really helps me out. Um, if you have any ideas for suggestions for games, I'm going to see if I can find a way to um, for you to ask me that somehow. I'm not sure how I'm going to do it on YouTube. I'm very new to this. Um, so, yeah, if you do find it interesting, share the videos around, spread the word. Um, and for, with that, I'll leave you for now. Next video, we'll probably do on adding a computer player to Pong. We'll see. So I look forward to seeing you then. Happy coding and I'll see you very soon.